at you with another slow fashion video. Ah, we are in the full swing of summer and so I thought since I am thoroughly enjoying this heat that this week I would share with you some of the steps that I take when I get my outfits ready for the summer every day and some of those little styling hacks that I do to take a more basic summer outfit and zhuzh it up a little so that when I walk out the door it feels a little bit more elevated and put together. I think although these little styling hacks and tweaks are so small, I've noticed that I use different ones in the warmer weather and the colder weather. I think the more times we walk out of our door feeling awesome and just pulled together, the fewer times we will be tempted to go buy something that we probably don't even need. So for those of you who are new, welcome. Every week I talk about slow fashion with a heavy focus on the principles of minimalism. So using and loving what you already have and making smart shopping decisions so that you can create a closet full of pieces that you actually love and wear. So if that sounds like your jam, hit subscribe below. I post every Sunday. And for those of you who are coming back, Big hello and welcome back. Thank you so, so much for coming back and watching. Let's jump on in. I find myself using three very simple and basic steps when I get dressed in the morning. So I'm going to go over all of those little things. And at the end, I've got a little summer lookbook for you where I show you the difference between sort of just a basic summer look. And then once it's been, you know, zhuzhed up a little, Starting with the absolute basics, there is choosing your outfit, which usually happens once I've looked at the weather, figured out my mood, how I'm feeling, and checked my agenda for the day. I also think a lot about fabric choice during this step as I'm planning just the base of my outfit. I always still try to stick to fabrics that will breathe well in the summer. So once that's done, the first choice is figuring out do I want to wear separates or a one piece, like a jumpsuit or a dress. The true base, however, is undergarments. And in my opinion, when it comes to summer and hot weather dressing, you can approach your undergarments two ways. The first is the very timeless, classic, and more discreet version where you don't want your undergarments to show. And normally I'm talking about bras. I think there isn't really a situation in which you would want someone seeing your underwear, as in your like underpants. On the other end of the spectrum is the camp where I actually fall a little bit more into and that is that your undergarments are probably going to be seen at some point in the summer because of lower necklines or wanting to wear a shirt unbuttoned a little bit lower than usual because it's hot and you're feeling sexy. I think this is actually a great opportunity to tastefully showcase perhaps some beautiful lingerie or underpinnings. So the way to do this in a tasteful and timeless manner is to invest in undergarments that are neutral. Blush or a color that is close to your skin tone, grey, black, no reds, no neons, no crazy prints. This will land you straight into tacky town. Showing off a little bit of perhaps lace, which is a timeless and classic material, or something a little bit more minimal and subdued, like these kind of embellishments here on the bra I'm wearing today. As long as they are classic and neutral, and that you're pairing them with classic and neutral basics, I think you can pack a pretty cool wardrobe punch into your summer look. Once I've figured out my undergarments and my base, whether I want to go with separates or a one piece, then I go into my little styling hacks. It's really about looking at the foundation pieces that I'm wearing and how can I tweak them to show that I've put a little bit more thought and deliberation into my outfit. The first little styling hack is cuffing, and this can be done on shirt sleeves, t-shirt sleeves, uh, pant bottoms, short hems, and I find myself doing this more in the summer. You can cuff your shirt sleeves using the classic J. Crew roll, which you roll it up once up to your elbows, then you take the bottom of the cuff that has been formed and roll that over just above the cuff, so you've got a little bit of the cuff peeking out. When it comes to cuffing your pants, there are so many ways that you can do this. I've actually done a video about all the different ways that you can cuff and tuck and roll your pants. I will link that here. But for the summer, I do find myself using a rather larger cuff because I know that 
it's warm outside, my ankle will be exposed, so I get a little bit of extra height. While I still tuck in my shirts in the summer, I find that it's a little bit more uncomfortable in the heat when you have two layers of fabric on your midsection. So instead of tucking in the summer, I actually find myself knotting my shirts and my t-shirts a lot more often, because this has the same effect as the tuck. It cinches in your waist or the part of your body that is the smallest and that you want to bring attention to. It pulls the look together, showing that you're a little bit more thoughtful and deliberate. Also, a knot is a little bit more playful, and I think this really lends to a more summertime personality. In the same vein as knotting, <laughs> Sounds so weird. I find summertime is a really fun time to knot your belts instead of buckling them as you normally would. And this is because when it's winter, a lot of times we're wearing heavier pieces that will fall over our belts. There's already a lot of volume happening. We might be wearing a lot of layers. A knotted belt might not only be uncomfortable, but it also just might look too busy and compete with whatever else is happening during the winter time, which I don't want to think about winter right now. There are so many ways that you can knot your belt, but these are my two favorites. styling tweak in this second step is double checking my shoes to see if they can be kicked up a notch. Oh, that was totally intended, that pun. You might want to just throw on your easiest pair of flip-flops or sneakers and just run out the door. But I am a firm believer in shoes making or breaking an outfit. So perhaps instead of grabbing whatever trusty shoe you normally run out the door with, look for a shoe that you know will be comfortable, but that also has a little bit more of an elevated look. Now that you've adjusted everything that's already physically on your person, it's time to head into step number three, which is add. Adding a scarf to your look in the summer is nothing new, and while I still wear a scarf around my neck sometimes during the summer, I find it can be a little bit restricting feeling. Like, I don't want to wear something that feels like a turtleneck when it's 30 degrees. So oftentimes I find myself adding a scarf in a different way. Often I'll tie it in my hair as a bandana or simply around a ponytail, and this adds a really great hit of femininity and playfulness without having to do much. Other times I'll wear it around my wrist as a bracelet instead of wearing sort of heavy metallics or leather. And finally, if I have one that is long enough, I could wrap my scarf around my waist as a belt instead of a traditional leather belt. I always ask myself if I can add a hat, not only to protect my face from the sun and camouflage me being too lazy to wash my hair that day, but also because a hat can add a lot of attitude and pizzazz to a summer look. An accessory that is often overlooked is a belt, and I do find myself still wearing these quite often in the summer because I don't have to wear a jacket. So now is a really fun time to show off your figure and to really create the silhouette that you want. The last thing I add is jewelry, and this is a great way to incorporate a personal touch or a vintage piece, and I often find myself layering more jewelry in the summer because the open necklines make such a beautiful backdrop for jewelry to show off.
So that is what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you find that those little tweaks really can bring your outfit up a notch. Let me know if you have any tips on zhuzhing up your summer outfits and leave them in the comments below. I always love to hear what other people are doing. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Hit thumbs up if you liked this video. Hit subscribe if you haven't already and I will be back next week with another slow fashion video. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao.